This is the Loaded Radio Podcast. Hey, it's Scott Penfold, and thanks for tuning in to the Loaded Radio Podcast, the first podcast of 2022. So sincerely, a happy new year to you, and a great show this week, as we're going to be talking with Lena Sisterhands, front woman for Infected Rain, as they have the new album, Agdysis, which is just killer from front to back. Such a great, brutal, strong album, and Infected Rain are definitely making a serious mark in metal. So we're going to be talking to Lena in just a few seconds, but as well, also, in the second portion of the podcast i'll be joined by loader video's own johnny rude live from las vegas we discuss the week that was in hard rock and metal and tons of other stuff whatever comes to mind so by all means if you feel like it stick around for that after i speak with this woman here the front woman for infected rain and she's one of my favorite front women in metal i think she brings such a powerful voice and such a brutal voice to her band infected rain healing from moldova I'm talking about lana scissor hands lana thanks so much for joining us on the loader radio podcast this week thank you now, you started singing at a very early age, right? Was it was 21? I was 21, I believe. So you just had the ambition, the passion, just to get up there and just front their band and get up on their own stage? Oh, that was actually an accident. I was That was not planned at all. I oh, was, really? <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't planned at all. I was a hair and makeup artist, a very successful one as well in my country. Mm-hmm. I was doing great and my plans for life was to do that to eventually have my own place and you know just do that because I loved it so much and uh, but I had you know being a metalhead and in, in being in that industry is just like you have friends in the industry of music you have friends I mean it's hard to call it industry because in, in Moldova is a very small country and everybody knows each other there are a bunch of local bands but not many Uh, bands actually make it outside the country even if they start touring a little bit um it doesn't last long in fact for some reason it's a pity but it's just not easy that's that's all it is and not everybody is ready to face all these difficulties right so when uh, so i just had a lot of friends musicians and i ended up being you know a bunch of rehearsals and I was asked to try to sing uh, by our DJ, which later became our DJ. Uh, Mm -hmm. Our DJ and Vidic, the guitar player, they were very good friends and they were just fooling around in the rehearsal studio playing some covers and stuff. And, you know, uh, the DJ asked me to sing and I did. And just for fun, you know, it was just us. It wasn't, it wasn't like all that big of a deal because nobody was listening. Nobody was recording. Mm-hmm. We were just having fun. Sure. So, you know, after a while, this guy, he said to me that I have a lot of potential and he thinks I should see a vocal teacher. And I don't know why, but just that little one time phrase, one time he said that. The seed was planted in my head and I like couldn't really... I couldn't really like get rid of the idea that, hey, really, maybe I should look at, you know, look up a teacher and learn how to use my voice. And so that was like in the beginning, way before the band started, yeah. kind of the band was putting together more musicians and we were like working on some of the lyrics I was writing. And I found a teacher in, uh, in um, Moldova that was uh, teaching in um, University of Music and I took personal lessons for three years uh, while we were in the first three years of the band. So that's how I started. But um, later on, obviously, I I could tell that I need more than that because it was just classic vocals, nothing specifically uh, directed into the genre that I was uh, doing. So I, uh, you know, I Googled it and I discovered the DVDs of Melissa Cross and I studied them as much as I could for years. Not until 2013 is when I had a personal lesson with her here in New York City in America. Um, so since then, yeah, since then she's my, she's my uh, mentor and my best friend too, actually. We, are, we became super close after that. And uh, yeah, that's how everything started. <laughs> that's really cool because uh, you, you just become such almost like a, a standout front woman right now in hard rock and metal. And uh, your voice is just so unique and so cool Thank and you. powerful. So I, I think that's, that's really awesome how that came about. Thank you. 
you were named actually by local media as the most eccentric vocalist of Moldova. Um, how did that come about? Or did you just hear about that one day or? I have no idea. <laughs> <That's just> <laughs> <for me>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently you were named by local media the most eccentric vocalist of Moldova. So that's pretty damn cool, right? That's cool, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> eccentric. Eccentric is a good thing. Is um, it? <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, now, do you and Vidic do a lot of writing together or is it more of a separate thing? Um, we work remotely the, the, for the majority of the time. Even when I used to live in Moldova, I was doing my thing. He was doing his thing. And then when we were ready to put melody, uh, words to the melody, then we work together. In the beginning, we worked more together than, than before, than now, I mean, um, because I was just such an unexperienced musician. I, you know, I never studied music. I never been in a different band. I didn't know what I'm doing. Right. Uh, when it comes to like melody, but then after uh, the you know the second album, um, it was all me. You know, first album it was like fully my boys. Uh, you know, in composing the melody for the vocals. Second album was us together. They gave me more like freedom and like we were working together. But then third, fourth, and now fifth album, it's it's all on me. Obviously, we polish it together in the end. We, you know, they, they can uh, come up with certain, like, suggestions here and there, but it's fully on me now. And, and I'm very thankful that they give me that um, freedom. Now, what you mentioned before, the person you work with as producer, did you want to talk about him a little bit again? Yes. Uh, Voluza Valentin is the guy that produced all our albums. He is from our country, and he happens to be our drummer's brother. Uh, however, we started working with him way before our drummer joined the band. Uh, as I mentioned before, Moldova is a small country with the, and the community of metalheads and musicians is kind of small as well. So um, that's how we started uh, working with him. You know, somebody told us about him and yeah, man, he is super talented. Every single album sounds different because he evolves. He is curious about his job and, and learns a lot every, every year. And we love him. He is our friend. And yeah. Would you say the new album is really a product of the pandemic? Like, what did you spend a lot of time doing? Uh, yeah, not just uh, really. It's funny because during the pandemic, we wrote a lot. And not only for Infected Rain, but also for other projects. I think I never done as many collaborations as during this time. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and there some there are some that didn't even come out yet. So there's really? <laughs> yeah, a lot is will still come out. But uh definitely Ecdesis was born during this period of time. We had a lot of time to just sit there and dedicate uh, uh you know our attention to every single sound, breath, theme, everything, emotion. So, yeah, for sure, we took our sweet time with like this <laughs> is. And also, we took our sweet time with every single visual for Egdesis. So, yeah, I mean, like, well, even including like, even just for the video for postmortem part one, a uh, killer video, great imagery with that, too. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I literally, I, it's almost like you guys have got yourself, like you've built yourself a really cool brand in the band, Infected Rain. I mean, you know what you're going to get and you know it's going to kick you in the ass, you know, which oh, is really, you. which is really, really brought really well done. So uh, I got to say, I'm a huge fan of what you guys are doing. I think you guys are outstanding and uh, it's great that you're Vegas local as well. That's fantastic. Uh, just me, just me. I'm the only one living here. Oh, um, are you? Okay. Yeah, the band uh, still lives in Moldova. They have their, you know, families there and stuff. So oh, I gotcha. travel. I'll, I travel there when we have to work. But yeah, thank you. I think what it is is that um, we've been independent for so long, and we we've done it all by ourselves for so long that even now, although we are under a label, um, they just encourage us to be ourselves, which is super cool, and. It's just us again, you know, like especially with this album, Egdesis, it, every single music video was uh, directed by us and in, invented by us. And, nice. you know, the special effects are done by us. Then it's edited by us and everything, you know, um, we only hire um, professional camera people and equipment. That's it. But before we used to also hire a, you know, a um, director for the music video sure. that will work on it later and stuff, you know, but even mm -hmm. though they were bringing to life our ideas still, 
But this, yeah, everything with egg disease, uh, postmortem part one, fighter that you are already familiar with and it's out and then other music videos that will come out very soon it were all done by us that's cool man ectasis uh january the 7th when that's going to drop via napalm um i get before we wrap up uh, upcoming plans for the immediate future what are you going to be up to actually we are we are releasing another music video for another song from the upcoming album and i'm very excited about that it's super heavy um nice and okay. then uh, together with the release of the album on January 7th, we will release another music video with it. So awesome. then February, we go on European tour. Hopefully nothing changes in the world and that will happen. And we will release more stuff. So there's a lot going on. We did really work a, a lot during you know, the pandemic. So there's still a lot of material that is waiting to uh, see the light. <laughs> no, it certainly sounds like you've been busy and, uh, and hopefully, I mean, we'll, we'll see you around Vegas, I'm sure at some point soon. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, all, all the best. Take care. Bye. There she is. There's Lena Scissorhands from Infected Rain right here on the Little Radio Podcast. Great talking to her. And as well, don't forget, Agdisis, the new album is out now. It's killer. It's awesome. And we're playing the hell out of it right here on Loaded Radio and LoadedRadio.com. Uh, but as now, as always, we're going to be joined by Loaded Radio's own Johnny Rude, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, where we're going to talk about the week that was in hard rock and metal. I've uh, got him pulled up right now. Hey, Johnny, what's happening? Matthias Jabs. <laughs> Matthias Jabs. <laughs> What's going on? He's uh, he scored a goal. He scored two goals for the Knights today. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's his awesome. name. His name is Matthias Jabs, Mark, and uh, we've called him, or at least I have. I send that picture around whenever he scores. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, I got a few buddies uh, throughout the planet here that we watch the hockey game. Yeah. Um, so as I was doing my thing, I had it going in the background. Yeah, he scored a couple goals. We had Paul Stanley. He used to be on our team, which was Paul, right. <laughs> Paul Stasny. Yeah. Um, so he actually scored on us. He plays for Winnipeg. So he scored today, Paul, Paul Stanley. Yeah. And then we, yeah. We have uh, this guy, uh, Max Pacioretty. Yeah. I said, I call him pastas ready. So I send a picture of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So uh, we had um, who did we have? We had another guy. We had um, Bob. We had another. We had a couple of good guys, man. Yeah. With with, with similar names, like, uh, uh, but but the the new one, yeah, is uh, Matthias. His name is Matthias Jabsmark or or Janmark. So we call okay. him. I call him Matthias Jabs. Matthias Jabsmark. Matthias Jabsmark. <laughs> yes, but that's his name. Anyways, that's the picture that goes with it. It's hilarious. Let's, uh, you know what? There's a few things. First off, Happy New Year, by the way, dude. Happy I mean, New Year to you too, buddy. Uh, yeah. I know we had. A, I know that it was killer. Oh yeah, it was great. I uh, I, I did the whole. Um, what did I do? Well, I watched a bunch of '80s horror. Right. That's what I did. Actually, it was more like 70s. I watched Vampires, which was great. It's about these two lesbian vampires. Oh, that's that, awesome. Uh, I think it's like the 1974, 75. It's about these two lesbian vampires. It's an English film. And um, it's like, yeah, it's pretty much like watching porn. I'm amazed they could get away yeah. with all the stuff that's in it. But um, yeah, like that. And I watched um, the, the Ripper of New York. Oh, I, I like that stuff. Yeah, that was meant, dude. <laughs> was it? Is it when you say the Ripper of New York? Was it like, uh, uh, like a Kolchak Night Stalker? <laughs> Very that similar. Was- it, it's like a, it's like a Giallo film um, where it's like uh, there's a like like a, like a Jack the Ripper going through New York City killing hookers and right. Um, and it, it's really good. It's it's really violent. And uh, yeah, I love that stuff. I've got actually tonight. I've got a few lined up to watch. Oh, that's uh, I'm cool. Gonna, I'm going to watch The Burning, which is a great classic slasher. Uh-huh. Uh huh. One of Tom Savini's first doing doing makeup uh, in in horror, but there's another one of the same genre that I'm going to be probably right. On, so. I'll, I'll give you something good to maybe maybe you've seen this, The Torso Killer. It's a Netflix uh, three or four part series. Is that the one that this, they wrote the Slipknot song about about the guy no. who was killing hookers and he was killing? They thought, hookers. they thought he was. They thought they thought he was only killing hookers or something. And no. Okay. No, well, he, I mean, they, it's it's all about seventies New York, late seventies New York. Oh, and, right, I haven't watched that yet. I'm, I want to watch that. Buddy, it's fucking great. I won't tell I you anything, but yeah. it's I, I. That's what I watched New Year's morning. I got up at seven, and Tam and I threw that on, and by noon we were like, "Wow, that was great." I just love all the old footage they have from back then in New York City, because yeah. I was I was there in seventy seven, and. Uh, 
I think 79. And then I was there in the 80s and then kind of lived there in the, in the early 90s. I remember, so yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen the progression and how they talk about it. It's so fucking true. But uh, as I'm watching this, I go, my God, I was walking around 42nd Street where all the smut shops were. And I went and saw uh, the Fury and Saturday Night Fever. Um, yeah, that would have been 77, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember Fury, I bought, that's a great movie. Oh, good movie. And I bought Queen News of the World T-shirt. Oh, yeah. With, I had, the, with the big robot. Yeah, I had that record. And so then I wanted the T-shirt and I bought it from some guy outside a park. You know, my it was 10 bucks or f- five bucks. I have no clue. Anyways, I just remember I loved it because I was a big fan of that record. And when you see the stock footage, it just brought me back, dude. And I was like, holy shit. And all those smut shops, too, man. It's like. Um, yeah. Well, Times it, Square was a really Times Square. different place, man. Yeah. It was a different world, different time. And uh, it's, it, it. I mean, it's all gone. And it was uh, Ed Koch came in. And Giuliani. Um, as Giuliani well, and they made it. Well, it's all Walt Disney World now. Yeah. 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 I went I mean, back. I, I mean, last time I was there, it, it, uh, I mean, it's just, it's so clean. It looks like Toronto even. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's well, very it's polished. Even, it, Times, Times Square, it's even cleaner. I went there 2012, me and AJ, and we went yeah. to reminisce. We ran into our old singer, went to a couple of fucking after hour booze cans. I mean, we had a kick ass time. Yeah. But we're, we're we're looking to park. We're driving around. And I went up to a cop. I go, dude, where, where can we park? He goes, you're not from here, are you? I said, no. He goes, you can't park in Times Square. If you want to park, <laughs> you got to park way down in Alphabet City and take a cab or, or the subway back up here. I go, no. So we looked around. The only thing they have, Scott, you look into these buildings on the, you know, on Broadway or whatever street it might be, 8th Avenue. Um, there's these ramps and it's parking $70 for two hours. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's what I did. Me and AJ, I said, listen, dude, I'm not driving. We're going to fucking pay the 70 bucks and we're going to cob around Times Square for two hours. And that's what we did. It was amazing. It was, it was a lot of fun that we could yeah. do that. But I bet you ne- that was 2012. I bet it's a hundred bucks now. Oh, it's pricey. It's a pricey city, dude. Oh, very <laughs> pricey. Buddy. Yeah, fuck. It's so I think one of the priciest cities on the planet. Joan Jett was someone who would come to mind if I think of New York. Um, yeah. And uh, reason being I, that I bring up Joan Jett is because I, I want to get your opinion on this. Ted Nugent slammed Rolling Stone magazine for including Joan Jett in its list of 100 greatest guitarists. Now, Ted Nugent, he's a very outspoken guy, obviously, and he loves giving his opinion. A great guitar player as well. You know, he gives love to Angus Young, Eddie Van Halen, Billy Gibbons, of course, people that should be there. But he also, he goes on to ask, what happened about Derek St. Holmes, who has worked with Ted, of course. Uh, he goes on to ask about, um, uh, then he goes on to say, the same way you get Grandmaster Flash and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You do that by lying. You have to be a liar. Uh, you have to have shit for brains and you have to be a soulless soulless prick to put joan jett <laughs> in the top wow. 100 guitar players um but he goes on to ask um where's dave amato from uh, ario speedwagon uh, dick wagner from the frost detroit he's naming off these detroit bands grand funk of railroad course. mark farner of course you know what uh, I, I got I an love- opinion yeah, I got, go ahead. I, I'll, I'll, well here's my, my take just would you i don't know this i have not read this but just with what you've told me yeah when you talk about an iconic guitar player um mm-hmm. you know a couple of guys immediately come to mind being Eddie Van Halen, yeah. and Jimi Hendrix, um, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. I, I, you got to think they've done something different. Derek St. Holmes, people will go, who? <laughs> really? Who's that? Oh, he's a guitar player and singer for uh, Ted Nugent. Who? Yeah. But you know, Ted Nugent. Okay, valid. That's good. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, so in all fairness, is Joan Jett a great guitar player? No. But did no. she... Did she went solo after a, a shitty girl band in a sense that became really cool and iconic when you look back at it? She went solo and did something. Not a great guitar player, but she did something in her own right. And I think, you know, if, if you're saying top 100, this guy's pulling who? Detroit dudes? Come on, yeah, man. From what, the Detroit 60s dudes. and 70s? Yeah. I mean, like, he, no. I think he's pulling out, pulling out like, so like going back to his Amboy Dukes days and stuff. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, I mean, I do have respect for, for Joan, uh, but uh, I don't get why Rolling Stone would put her in the top 100 personally. And again, that's not against Joan. She's awesome. She's great at what she does at fronting, being a badass chicken rock and roll. But as a guitar player, I would not, and I'm good, I'd consider it a category. I would not categorize her in the top 100 with Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, uh, but Don Bag Daryl. I just wouldn't. This is you saying that. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. And, and listen, I, I, I agree um, with you. But again, to slam somebody and then pull out these random kind of 
great players, I'm sure, but no names. That that's I mean, I don't I don't think think that that is valid as well. If he pulled out like, you know, like Eddie Van Halen, who wasn't in there or Jimi Hendrix, then you've got a point. But when you pull these random dudes, but I see his point. But getting into the Grandmaster Flash things in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you and I have talked about this forever. It's the farthest thing from Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's yeah. it's this made up award. It's just become something. Uh, because I guess people have made it something. It's nothing. Whoever these people vote, whoever the voters are, they're, they're, they're nobodies. No. Um, it's not by your peers or it's whoever built that thing back in 1989 or 88, whenever this thing got built. Um, it's nothing, dude. Uh, and to put Grandmaster Flash, no, that's a separate thing. Make the Rap Hall of Fame awards. And I think they are. I think they're doing yeah. the R&B or rap. Put all that in there. Um, like putting... Madonna in there. Again, it's a different thing to use the coin rock and roll. You can't put that in there because mm -hmm. uh, that's not rock and roll. Rock and roll has got many faces and Grandmaster Flash is not part of the face. It's it's no. it, same with Madonna for that matter. It's all great stuff. Whatever you're into, flash in the pan shit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, did Grandmaster Flash change the history of music, I, I think so. They came out first doing their thing. Yeah. Um, but not in know. rock. Not, not, no, no, not, not rock. No, 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 no. So do they deserve accolades of some point? Absolutely. They took yeah. a chance and they did something from the street. They, they were talentless, you know, but they could rhyme, I guess, if that's what you want to do. And then, you know, they put out uh, that Grandmaster Flash and the Furi Furious Five message, yeah. message. And then they did White Lines, which was cool, man. But yep. but it's not rock and roll. Oh, my God. It's it's no. not. Chuck Berry is rock and roll. Elvis Chuck Presley, Berry, Buddy the, Holly, all the that true stuff. king of rock and roll. Yeah. You know, and, and we talked about this in a, in a previous podcast. We went, and you could go on forever. And, and I mean, and that actually brings me to my next story as rap frontman Stephen Piercy. He says that he doubts. Rat will ever be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He says that I doubt that'll ever happen. Unfortunately, everything is politics. I watched the last Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's such a piece of shit. He then said some people deserve to be there and some people really don't. I mean, there's some people from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, but in some 80s, people need to be there definitely, but not what's politically. This is the token hair band kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, and and unfortunately, I know that Rat may not be as big as Motley Crue, for example, or you know, as big as Guns N' Roses, but they were a very substantial band within that era that was the 80s i think that they they definitely would have a spot in the rock and roll hall of fame particularly robin crosby because of the influence that he had but well, i don't think it'll happen well i mean we're, we have a little bit of a difference of opinion here as i do i love the band bro um but there's no and, and this is my opinion there's no way in hell rat will be in the rock and roll hall of fame the reason this is why there's been so many watered down versions of this band Mm -hmm. It hasn't stuck together. You've had a bunch of has been no name guys fronting it, playing guitar in it. It's it, they've had arguments. They've gone to court over it. They've, they've had the blotter experience. It's just it's defamed it. it. To me, it's ruined it and tainted it. If they had stuck together and I'll say you go to Motley Crue, there's been a couple of weird things that's happened in there. But predominantly, th that has stuck together and they've transcended time. Motley Crue can headline stadiums Stephen Piercy cannot he, he's gonna he's lucky if he gets four or five hundred people in there um, well if, if he had that classic lineup of rat I think that they would do a little bit better they would but I'm saying right now as it is there's too much infighting there's it's all stupid and it sucks I mean I saw them back in the day yeah I was a kid and I loved it as you know some little girl went and saw Duran Duran around the same time period and loved it so I mean yeah. that that's what it was I mean but if you go to Duran Duran there's been a few um, incarnations of that too but the the, the nucleus of that is stay together and there's there's more legitimacy with something like that than say rap because there's no rat it's Stephen Piercy and a bunch of dudes he's and, got and well, Juan Cruce's in there yeah he's got Juan but I mean yeah. give me a break they're all alive except Rob and it's too bad yeah they should bury the hatch and just do what they need to do it's I mean I hate bringing this band up but you know the bullet boys that was a, a joke too but it, as long as they're alive and they're together get together make the money do the shows because this is all you got same with skid row and sebastian yeah. get together but th that'll never happen and it's too bad because it's it's egos and and all that shit but as far as getting into the rock and roll hall of fame i there's no way you might get a uh if there's such an award an era um the, an era you know award recognition you know, the, or something like. yeah like the bands that were there was motley Crue, rat dockin 
um, you know, and poison and more. I mean, I don't know. You 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 go past it because there's so many bands. And and yes, that first Rat album is amazing. The first three, I think, are fantastic. Yeah, they're killer. They're killer killer records. But as yeah. it, it just, I think that it's just been bastardized so much. It's it's frowned upon. Um, it's yeah. not like a Zeppelin. You know, when John Bonham died, it was done. You yeah. know, um, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen's gone. It's done. Pantera, Dimebag's gone. It's done. These are different animals, dude. Yeah. Uh, this, this, and I'm not saying don't work. Absolutely, Stephen Piercy work, but you, you don't. I mean, that to me is a, a ridiculous thing. Yeah, it's a shit show award, and he watched it. I won't even watch it because it's a shit show. Yeah. But rap will never get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, uh, well, Piercy, you know, see, that's the thing is Stephen Piercy, he's actually been talking recently saying that he wants that classic lineup to get back together. Um, I mean, I'm guessing with Carlos Cavazzo, I'm guessing. I mean, but he wants that nucleus to, or I guess that or that formation to get together and either record or tour. He said for, for one more time, that's what he's into, because apparently he's sort of working things out with blots or blots or appeared on his live stream. And then you've got, you know, a Warren D. Martini seems to be kind of a bit of an issue. <laughs> yes, yeah, he band, is. You know? he's, he's, he's spun out there, dude. He's he's. He's, he's down the rabbit hole with a bunch of shit, but um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Political stuff. And I don't know. It's just, it's all weird, but dude, they all could be together. And look, they just put that. I mean, it was Piercy who put the Geico commercial and just brought them huge sales. Yeah. And I think this is where the the lines get blurred with someone like that. Look at, I, I'm the voice of rat. I wrote these songs and now I'm in a commercial, but who were those dudes that were in the video or the, the commercial with you? I mean, I know who they are, but no one knows. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? It, it's ridiculous. It was like Jimmy DeGrasso was in there. I think it's yeah, just, <laughs> it just, it's uh, who cares? Um, but, well, you know what? John Karabi, he played in rap for a while. He actually just recently gave an interview where they said for the eight years that he was in rat, even when Jizzy Pearl was in there singing, he, yeah. there was constant bickering and fighting within. He has no idea. He says that rat, uh, th those classic rat members can't get through a rehearsal without wanting to kill each other. Yeah. And that's the thing, dude. That's, that's why it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's too bad. It's a joke. Um, yeah. You know, it, 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 everything rears its ugly heads. It's just ego. I mean, for Bobby Blotzer to go and put his version again, working. You got to work. And so he thought he could put it. He came out here and put it together with uh, the Sin City Sinners. He broke up that band to do it for his own thing. Yeah. And uh, it did OK. And then he got sued. You can't use the name. You're just the drummer. But he was at there at the beginning. I mean, there's so many facets of this. It, it's it's crazy. It's uh, again, you go with Kiss. Look at what they've had. They've had different guitar players. But the nucleus has been there being, you know, the Gene and Paul thing. They made sure it was them. And again, you put makeup on somebody and some you know, cop goes, look, kiss, man, look at that. It's H freely. You know, it could be anybody up there. Who cares? No. Um, it's, it's a, it's a tough one, but if to get, put the original band back together and you, dude, you're all getting older. This way you can make a, a little bit of money right now. Yeah. Big cash grab at the end there. Right? You know, Do the cash right? grab. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it looks like Creator. I've got a new album. Uh, it's going to be coming out in the summer of this year. Yeah. We're in 2022 now. So new Creator coming out this year, John, were you ever into, into Creator at all? Um, no, but I think they played the Elma Combo. I may have been there. Um, no, I'm thinking of Celtic Frost. Pretty sure Creator played the Elmo back in, in the day. But no, I was never really into them. I, I, I can say that, honestly. Great German thrash metal iconic band. Um, yeah, I guess Germany's contribution to the thrash era. I mean, we, over here in North America, we had like the Bay Area, right? So Right, right. Um, a lot, but, uh, a lot of cool stuff. Absolutely. Tons yeah, of definitely. cool stuff back then. Black Sabbath guitarist Tony Iommi, he uh, published a year-end video message where he looked back at some of the projects he was involved with throughout 2021, also mentioning uh, the song that he wrote for Ozzy Osbourne's solo album coming out this year, which right. uh, Ozzy sings on. Of course, he said that Ozzy sounds great on that. So that, that album, I think, is going to be just so big when it hits, man. So many people on this thing. Yeah, there's so many people. It's, a, it's I think, a, a tribute album kind of thing, even though it's not, but it's it's sort of tribute-y. Um, yeah. Oh, I think it's, it'll, it'll be iconic. Yeah. it's it, And again, it could be Ozzy's swan song in a sense. I mean, he's saying he's going to be touring uh, this year, end of this year or something. I mean, who knows? Yeah, says, I've yeah. Read, yeah, I've read articles where you know people close to that camp have said, no, you're never going to see Ozzy on stage again. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's really not in the best of health, you know, so. No, no, that's the whole thing. You know, yeah, but, I know. Uh, a drummer that you that I know that you're a big fan of, Matt Cameron, recently shared a photo of himself in the studio with fellow grunge icon Chris Dovaselic from Nirvana. So they're apparently working on something together. I think that's really cool. I think that's totally cool. All that stuff, you know, the Cornell's passed away. A lot of guys passed away. Um, and, uh, you know, Lane Staley, Alice Chase. Again, that was one of those great time capsules, you know, that 90s thing that a lot of us who are into the 
the eighties rock hated, but in retrospect, you look back a lot of it, it's awesome, man. And I love seeing Mac. He's played with so many people. He's a monster, but He's uh, amazing, I, dude. I used to call him Chris Nova <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> that's a great name dude <laughs> yeah yeah but no i love that stuff. i think it's great dude they all live in the same area they're all part of that scene and and why not man you know you were mentioning kiss a bit earlier of course you and i've talked about this off the air as well uh eric singer joining uh bruce kulik on stage at vamped in las vegas for his show on december 30th you can watch the concert at our website i watched it the other night john and you uh-huh. know what it, uh, it was great i really enjoyed it with todd kearns fronting i thought it was great yeah, yeah. i saw a little bit of it as well um brent fitz was supposed to be drumming for it but uh he caught the COVID again. Um, yeah. I think it's like the twelfth time he's the he's the poster child for this stuff. But uh, oh, yeah, he got sick. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So they called in uh, Eric Singer. I was actually a friend of mine. He was the head tech for that. He he, he was shooting me some pictures from Soundcheck, and they did a meet and greet earlier, like yeah. a, a Q and A. Yeah, but it it was cool. Uh, Seeing Eric did, Singer and and Bruce Kulick, I, I think for me would have been, been really cool personally because I remember my resurgence, my relove of Kiss came with the Revenge album, um, and and th- th- that was a really big seminal album for me personally. Yeah, so that would have been really cool. That's well, it's a great record. I remember yeah. again seeing that uh, we played Lemoore's in Brooklyn on a Saturday night. We headlined and uh, Kiss did the last of uh, they did eight shows around the world. Toronto was one, and then they did Lemoore's in Brooklyn, and uh, I think in Japan and England and stuff. So we saw the last show. We got invited back and got to hang out, but it was amazing. Um, yeah. And that that record, they they played the crap out of it, and. Uh, yeah, we were there with the Anthrax guys, and you know, everyone, every, everybody from New York was there. So it, it was it was super cool. But yeah, I saw a little bit of what happened uh, at that show. Yeah, it sounded great. Kernsey sang great. Uh, you got Zach throwing up there. Yeah, man, and, it, it, um, it sounded great. Yeah, it was killer, dude. Bruce Kulik uh, and then Eric Singer. Um, actually, my buddy talked to me yesterday. He said, "Yeah, I've got to pick up the drums and bring them back to Eric's house." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone lives here now, dude. Everybody I know they do, man. Don't forget to, to uh, check out LoadedRadio.com for all your hard rock and metal news as well the 24-hour stream and you can download the loaded radio app which is completely free it's our gift to you it gives you access to the 24-hour stream all the news all the podcasts and so much more on behalf of johnny root and everybody else at loaded radio thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you again next week right here on the loaded radio podcast loaded radio